Thank you, Neil. OK, the race continues. Neville Crichton there in the white uh, Sierra Cosworth. Having a lap put on him by Glenn Seaton in number 15. And right behind Seaton is, of course, Larry Perkins. Once again, they take the bottom end of the circuit in through Coca-Cola Corner. And now head up uh, T-Mart Hill. Great... Uh, Maturity on the part of Glenn Seaton, only 21 years of age. His dad, Bo Seaton, of course, was a household name at Touring Car Racing back some years ago. And uh, Barry Seaton, of course, doing all the engine work for the Peter Jackson Nissan team. Nothing like keeping it all in the family. He's raised a good offspring, I'll tell you that. The kid is a very, very good driver. Very underrated last year. He wound up tapping a couple of cars. And, of course, everyone blamed the youngster. He's matured tremendously. Let's take a look at the Castrol GTX2 race splits to give you an idea of the times. Glenn Seaton is your race leader for Peter Jackson. This and 1.42 seconds clear of Larry Perkins and the Commodore. A further 5.68 seconds back to George Fury. And they've already put a lap on one of the M3s. So it's all closing up uh, rather dramatically. Mart Hill again. Perkins. Still stalking the 15 car. He'd be happy to sit there now, I would think, for a minute or two now. He's that close to the leader. Allow everything to cool down. Allow himself to cool down. Because I think he was fairly angry with himself earlier on after that mistake on the first lap. And he'll cool down a little bit, I should think, and uh, wait for an opportunity rather than make one. Well, of course, yesterday's practice showed us that, uh, that we had a, a situation of two new cars, the Sierra Cosworth Turbo and, of course, the BMW M3 sharing the front row with a dry racetrack today and a bit of horsepower getting down on the road. The grunt cars are back. Nothing can beat something with a bit of horsepower, and of course, one that uh, does bring out a lot of horsepower is that turbo Nissan. The Commodores, and particularly Perkins, has been outstanding today. Still plenty of heart, though, for Nick Johnson and uh, for Jimmy Richards. And this is the only uh, the only race, of course, that these guys have had on uh, on local soil. The top runners a meeting a couple of weeks ago at Oran Park for the tourers. But you'll notice Larry Perkins after doing so much development work here at Calder and running the Nissan Mobile Series in New Zealand is going to be a force to be reckoned with in the uh, Shell Ultra Series in 87. Is he indeed? He's closed this gap dramatically right in behind Glenn Seaton now and I'm surprised that the condition of Larry's tyres is still such that he can challenge the Nissan quite comfortably. They've just completed 44 laps, 16 to go. Well, of course, that's where the testing pays off. The fact that he's done so many miles, he knew exactly what compound to fit before the race started and exactly how long the tyres would last and what he could do with them. He's a very gritty competitor and uh, a good sponsorship backing this year. They built two cars last year. They have solved one. The other one is running today in the hands of Tony Noski, a former Speedway driver in the Ferrari Transport entry. And this is the fresh car that they took to New Zealand. They hoped to have it back in time for Oran Park. They couldn't get it back off the boat from Pukekohe near Auckland. So this is the first run this year for the newer of their two VK Commodores. And Larry said yesterday in a conference that he'll stick with this car for some time before he upgrades to the VL. Something like $100,000 invested in building one of these cars and they'll wait and see what sort of advantage is to be gained out of the new VL Commodore. Starting to slide just a little now as he comes out of Glow Weave. Keeping in mind our Motorsport on 7 continues. Next weekend, the second round of the Shell Ultra Touring Car Championship, the big Australian National Line Carnival at Simmons Plains in Launceston. A big good afternoon to all our viewers uh, watching us through Tasmania, throughout Australia, New Zealand, and of course uh, with our Touring Car Championship packages going throughout Europe this year as well. Simmons Plains next week brings us uh, also the ISIS Formula 2 Championship and not to forget the super bikes back in the Aussie Land Series as well. So more motor racing to come to you next weekend from Simmons Plains. There's the placing on the Castrol scoreboard. Glenn Seaton, the race leader, narrowly from Perkins. Fury is third.
47 of 60. Great Scott, they said a few seconds ago, as Gary Scott went off into the sand trap only about uh, 10 or 15 seconds back. And this is how it happened. Caught on our shell. Instant replay. Walsing around, and it lets go. Right in front of Dick Johnson, squares up Johnson out of the uh, harm's way and powers straight off into the sand trap. Full clip. Woo this is the other park, Commodore. It does a bit of uh, front end damage on the way through. So exit Gary Scott, exit Peter Brock. A little work to do for the mobile team. They'll be back at Simmons Plains next week. One of the new cars making its Australian Touring Car Championship debut this weekend is the new Caltex entry, the Alpha 75 Turbo, being driven by former Australian Rally Champion, Touring Car Champion and Hardy winner, Colin Bond. And Richard, you were saying earlier in the weekend when you first arrived from England that with development this is the car that you think is going to be the uh, force to be reckoned with later in the year. Well, they believe they can get 318 brake horsepower out of it, which is the same sort of power as the best. The difference is that it can run lighter weight. And therefore, I think that uh, if they can make it reliable, which Colin Bond seems to have done, that car was never reliable in Europe at all when it was run by Luigi, uh, it could well be the car to be. This car ran, I think, at uh, Zolder briefly last year. Very briefly, yeah. Very about briefly. 10 laps. And it ran at Oran Park a few weeks ago, uh, finishing second behind a Commodore, but they still haven't, as Bondy puts it, Australianised the car. He's still got quite a bit of work to do. But I think it's going to be a little goer. He's in 12th position at the moment, and with the new class structure, this year, only two classes, under two and a half litre, over two and a half litre. This car should come into its own quite nicely. At the moment, it's still fairly heavy. It's still on the fat side. It's around about 2,010 kilograms. The class minimum is 960. So one of the obvious ways to get some pace at the moment is uh, to trip some weight out. Well, of course, just about uh, everything in touring car racing is towards small cars, lighter cars, more competitive cars for 87. Here's one of them. You expect to see this car far more competitive as each race goes by. It's the uh, Shell Ultra Cosworth Sierra making its debut here today at uh, Calder Park. Dickie Johnson screaming down the front straight. Running ninth at the moment. And Dick Johnson, of course, hardly needs any introduction. Courtesy of Nissan Know How. 42 years of age. That makes him a veteran from Brisbane driving the uh, Shell Ford Sierra. First in the Australian Touring Car Championship, 81, 82, 84. Second in the 85 Touros. Sixth in 86. Of course, we'll all remember first in the shortened James Hardy 1000 back in 81. He plans to win at full distance this year. Gary Scott continues to lead. Opening round of the Australian Touring Car title, and here he is. Uh, Glenn Seaton, I'm sorry. Got the Scots and the Seatons. Those in the sands and those that have been trapped. You take a look at the front of that car, I think he's had a bit, a bit of trouble with one or two of the back markers getting in his way. There's certainly been a few of them lurking out there and uh, it brings up an issue that surfaces regularly in Australian motorsport. What do you do with the, uh, the very small cars, the under 1.6 litre cars? And I guess you just have to be wary of the traffic. Everybody knows they're there. I think the guys with small cars do their very best sometimes, but if you're committed to a line, you just have to stay with it. But Glenn done a great job so far to thread his way through difficult conditions and still got control of the race and Larry Perkins is just inching closer all the time. Yeah, I think he's just he's just sitting there waiting. Uh, it's a lot easier to follow somebody and push them rather than take the lead. But at this stage of the race, Perkins is going to want to do no more than he absolutely has to and then leave it until the last moment, I think. You know, come five, four or five laps from the end, I think that's when we'll see him start to make his... The point. only problem is, looming in the background, is another blue and white Peter Jackson Nissan Skyline. The driver happens to be a New South Wales farmer with the name of George Fury. And he is coming on like gangbusters in the closing stages of this race. We're getting set for a tight finish to the opening round of the uh, Australian Touring Car title from Calder Park this afternoon. At the moment, though, all the cards seem stacked in favour of the man leading. Our stroll scoreboard shows Glenn Seaton still doing it for PJs. Perkins is second, the NZ Connectors Commodore. And third, George Fury in Nissan number two. Four of 60, opening round of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. And of course, Glenn Seaton in the Peter Jackson Nissan Skyline, number 15, continues to lead. They're Seaton just ahead of Dick Johnson, and sitting right in behind Dick Johnson at this stage is uh, Larry Perkins trying to stay in touch. And 
and right behind Perkins is George Fury coming in for a tight finish as they go across the line. They'll have five laps remaining. Fury's the man that's moving at the moment. Larry's still attributed with having recorded the fastest lap of a 61.61, but George just recently improved his best time down. It was 61.87. You can see a moment ago just how much he's closed that gap. And Glenn Seaton, the man with pressure on him at the moment, he's doing a good job. We were discussing it in the break. And this will be a real test of his skill. Only 21 years of age, but been driving for a long time and coming up behind Tony Noski in the ex Larry Perkins VK Holden Commodore. Well known Speedway exponent. And he's let them all rush by. Moves out to allow Glenn Seaton through. Perkins still on the charge after a opening round race win at Calder Park today. Really, you couldn't fault Glenn Seaton. He's driven superbly here. Fury still looming as a potential danger man, certainly for Larry Perkins. As lap after lap, he just gets a little closer. Heading downhill to the right-hander at Coca-Cola. One of the interesting things that I just checked was the lap record held at this circuit with uh, touring cars, and George Fury's got it at a time of 60.91. And that, of course, is about a second quicker than he's gone so far today. So maybe he's got something in reserve still. Track conditions are a little different today, and temperatures play a very big role in the way these turbo cars perform. And that can always be weighed into account. But I am surprised that in uh, 12 months that they're still circulating at around about the same time. But also remember that George had to fight very hard early on with a lot of traffic. And in fact, most of the guys didn't. There he is, front left-hand side of his car, looking a little worse for wear as well. And when your tyres are fresh and your fuel load is lightening, but you've got traffic around you, you obviously can't put in your optimum lap, and that's possibly what happened. They certainly won't be doing it right now. So the order, still Glenn Seaton for the Peter Jackson Nissan team, Larry Perkins, NZ Fluid Connectors Commodore, and George Fury in car number 30, the second of the Skylines. And they are all on the same lap, separated only by probably a couple of seconds. Glenn Seaton's biggest worry at the moment, I would think he's going to be back markers. As he goes round there, anybody getting in his way is going to allow Perkins, of course, to close up on him. And that will be his biggest worry at the moment, I would think. Well, Jimmy Richards displaying today great uh, spirit in the opening laps after winning the uh, the Park Royal pole sitter spot yesterday. I think we can expect bit bigger and better things to come from the M3, perhaps a, a week from today at Seven Plains. In fact, Park Royal have uh, also picked up some sponsorship with Larry Perkins for this season as well, so they've become involved in motorsport, which is good for us all. But I don't know whether or not we're going to get uh, too much closer between these three guys. I think they've all got the rubber band stretched as tight as it will go. Murray Carter there in the Everlast entry car number 14. Same spec as the lead car, but about to lose a lap to the leader. They drew blue. Murray up over the top of T Mart's Hill. They're on lap 58. There's about one and a half to go. Larry will pull all the stops out now. A curious finish to this first round of the Shell Ultra Australian Touring Car Championship. Certainly. A great start for Nissan, no matter how the cards fall in this one. They've got two cars in the top three. And this year, with the Manufacturers' Championship being combined into the Australian Touring Car title, puts them in very good stead with their point score as a manufacturer. It'll be interesting to see how these cars ran up against some of the European opposition, actually, and on some of the European circuits, which tend to be a, a lot longer uh, and a little bit quicker than these. Moving into the final lap, things looking good for Glenn Seaton in car number 15. Peter Jackson, this is Skyline. Through the right-hander. Short straight for the next right. Now back to the left and up T-Mart Hill. We'll give you the gap, the visual gap now to Larry Perkins. No. Glenn has been able to consolidate his lead. Comes out. He's got uh, Carter just ahead of him. Slows him up just a touch as they come down to Shell Corner. So things coming up uh, roses for the Peter Jackson Nissan team 
as Glenn Seaton heads into the final corner. What a race to open the Australian Touring Car Championship for 1987. Listen, car number 15 coming out of the last bend across the line, takes the chequered flag. The win goes to Glenn Seaton's second spot. will go to Larry Perkins, third place to George Fury. Fourth place, in fact, will go to Alan Grice in car number two. Well, first blood in the series to a 21-year-old who promised so much in 86 and has delivered first race of 1987. Sterling performance from uh, young Glenn Seaton. Great drive from Larry Perkins. There's confirmation of placings in round 